Hello again, everybody. Steve Politi from the Star Ledger, joined by Tom Lucci in the studio for the first time to do our weekly Rutgers feature. We've had a long layoff here, Tom. Are you, are you ready? Do you feel uh, like you're back in shape? Well, I have a little rust. I'm trying to shed the rust. Shed but, the rust. Uh, I, had a, I, had, you know, I was chopping this week, so I'm okay. I'm uh, ready to go. Well, hopefully Rutgers doesn't have any rust, because this is really the start of their, their, the peak part of their schedule now. They have Maryland this week, then Cincinnati. They go to Syracuse, better than we thought, apparently. Yes. And then, of course, the game against South Florida. What, what, how, how do you size up this stretch now if you're looking at Rutgers? Well, in, in the NFL, they would call the first three games of Rutgers season the preseason. In college football, they call it halfway to bowl eligibility because Rutgers is 3-0. But there's no question, this is the stretch. It starts with Maryland, uh, probably a Maryland team that's not quite as good as we, we thought they might be. But after that, the Cincinnati, Syracuse, South Florida, West Virginia stretch, which is going to decide Rutgers' season. So we're in, the, we're in that, that point of the season where it's going to tell where Rutgers is going after, uh, after all the games are over. Now, this game, especially Maryland, it seems like it's bigger than just one victory. There are some implications here. Maryland has 16 players from New Jersey in its roster. Obviously, Greg Shiano is trying to, he's trying to cross the Mason-Dixon line to expand the, uh, the state of New Jersey a little bit and start recruiting Maryland athletes. Uh, I mean, do you agree that the idea that this game, you know, especially in, in the scheme of things for the Rutgers program, has implications? beyond just one victory? Oh, I think it has some recruiting implications, no question. I mean, the state of Rutgers has been expanded a little bit to eastern Pennsylvania and to Maryland. On, on this year's roster, there's two true freshmen from Maryland, Joe Lefez, the safety, and uh, the running back, Jordan Brooks. So that's the first time Rutgers has really ventured into Maryland. And if you think about it, it makes sense if there are players in that area, uh, just as it makes sense for Maryland if there are players in New Jersey, because it's about a three-hour drive. So anything that's in that area of three-hour drives for either of those schools would seem to make sense as a recruiting base. Now, uh, now, Maryland played okay in the first half against West Virginia, came out with a loss, Did, didn't do so well against Wake Forest. Uh, I guess the big question when they were looking for a quarterback in the preseason, do you think they found one? I'm not sure that's been answered yet because he, uh, Jordan Steffi had a major meltdown in a Wake Forest game. It reminded me of the 2005 Rutgers-Illinois game. Rutgers is up 27-7 there, wound up losing in overtime. Uh, Maryland's up 24-3 in the third quarter. Jordan Steffi throws an interception on the three-yard line that's returned 100 yards. The whole game changes. Wake Forest wins 31-24 in overtime. Uh, the one thing that I did pick up from that game, I'm not sure if Ralph Fridge and the Maryland coach lost some confidence in, in Steffi because after the interception in the rest of regulation uh, for the half of the third quarter and the fourth quarter, Steffi only tried two passes. So he is, he is mistake prone. He is interception prone. And the thing that amazes me for an athlete, a guy who can move around a little bit, uh, Maryland has had their quarterbacks sacked 16 times. And now it's compounded by the fact that their left tackle, uh, uh, Scott Burley, may not play in a game because of an injury. So, right. you know, Rutgers' defensive line is licking their chops right. a little and bit. And it's come off a game where Rutgers' defense looked, pro, obviously against Norfolk State, but still looked pretty good. And, and I have, yeah. have to feel like they're, they're playing much better now than, than they did earlier in the season. And I, I think this is probably a good opportunity for the Rutgers' defense to really prove that they're better than they were last year. Uh, we want to go to one item that wasn't exactly football-related, but... Uh, William Dowling, the, the controversial Rutgers professor, obviously has a book to sell, and uh, his comments in the New York Times this week uh, uh, caused quite a stir at Rutgers. I'm just going to read them to you. Uh, if you are giving the scholarship to an intellectually brilliant kid who happens to play a sport, that's fine, but they give it to functional illiterates who can't read a cereal box, and they make him spend 50 hours a week on physical skills. That's not an opportunity. If you want to give financial help to minorities, go find the ones that are at, a, at the library after school. I mean, I, I just amazing that, that a, a university professor can just, <laughs> I think something that's blatantly racist to say something like that. Uh, and I'm, I'm just, I, I, he obviously has not met the Rutgers athletes that we're around, who many of them are, are some of the smartest kids you'll ever, you'll ever sit down and have a conversation with. I'm just amazed no that this is, that this uh, is First of all, the cereal boxes are difficult to read. I, I've, had a, I've, small, yeah. I've struggled a lot in the morning, even with my glasses. I, it's tough to read. <laughs> the second thing is, uh, I have a copy of the book. I've tried to read the first paragraph of the book. I fell asleep. The book is, a, is an incredible cure for insomnia. <laughs> it's a, the, one of the most boring books that I've ever tried to read. Uh, and I don't know that I would recommend to any Rutgers football player that they try to read it, only because they, they wouldn't be able to stay awake. Now, I mean, I miss gets fired over, over saying things. Well, where, you, do you think the level of outrage is, is, is where it should be? No, I, and I'm surprised by it. I mean, where, you know, where, where, where is uh, you know, Jesse Jackson? Where is Al Sharpton? This is the second time this guy's made a comment you know, in this vein. You know, he did it in uh, Nate Jones' senior year. Uh, there was some outrage in that. He said it in Sports Illustrated. And again, once again, the reaction may be because Rutgers is trying to mute it a little bit and, and hope that this blows over and goes away. 
Uh, but my only advice to Professor Dowling would be leave the writing to the writers because obviously you can't do that. My advice would be for him to just go away. But, uh, and that's what we're going to do now. Prediction for this week's game? Uh, I think Rutgers is going to handle Maryland pretty easily. I'm, I'm looking at something like 38-17. Uh, I agree with and you. And I'm on a roll because yeah. I had the halftime score of Norfolk State correct. You did, yes. And I was looking at almost the perfect score in Norfolk State and just missed Navy. Right. So uh, I'm still wait, waiting for you to pick a horse, right? But the, 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 well, the stakes are coming it, up. Maybe I, you get some. It's, it's like Rutgers. I do it in stakes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's progress. I, right. I have to take it one step at a time. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go with 31-14. Uh, enjoy the game, and we'll see you next week.